group is working to make Indianapolis streets safer for people with disabilities. This was an inside look at a workshop where people talked about walkability issues and barriers in their neighborhoods. They are trying to figure out ways to make the city safer for pedestrians. Concerned citizens met today at the East Washington Branch Library talking about ways to make the roads safer for bicyclists and pedestrians. The workshop focusing in on the east side in areas like the Washington Street Quarter and Ir uh, Irvington area. It is sponsored by a group called Accessibility, which works to break barriers and bridge gaps for the disabled. Try to get more pedestrian safety features on our sidewalks, so fixing sidewalks, um, making auditory signals, making sure that there are yield signs, that there are crosswalks painted, and that there are maybe speed signs. So they're and they're going to submit these ideas that people are coming up with, and they'll give them to the Department of Public Works. And the next pedestrian workshop will be on the west side. Athletes from across the state competing today at the Indi University of Indianapolis for Special Olympics Indiana's 2019 Youth State Basketball Tournament. This was the scene inside Nickerson Hall as 20 teams battled it out on the hardwood. This is the only state tournament in the world for youth Special Olympic athletes. A class of UND students teaming up with Special Olympics Indiana to make this happen. The nonprofit reaches more than 14,000 athletes across the state. Indianapolis is one of six cities where Starbucks is rolling out strawless lids beginning this summer. The company has not said which Indianapolis locations were selected to start getting the strawless lids. They've been 9% uh, less plastic than the current lids and straws. If you're wondering what they replaced the straw with, the cup will have an opening to sip from instead of a straw. Congratulations are in order for this Indianapolis couple. Brandy Pugh and Jeffrey Jackson dressed up as Batman and Robin for their wedding. It was hosted and catered by White Castle. The couple submitted a story for a radio contest about their relationship and what White Castle means to them. They walked down the aisle today at White Castle and exchanged their wedding vows. White Castle provided the food, a cake, a photographer, flowers, a DJ, even their wedding bands. When we originally planned to do this in the fall, and this actually just sprung upon us, we decided to still keep our idea and go with the superhero thing. With so, and she likes Batman, so of course I was Batman and she was Robin. She's like the sidekick for me. Brandy and Jeffrey are middle school sweethearts. They reconnected four years ago and have one daughter together. Coming up, now what? Special Counsel Robert Mueller ends the Russia investigation, but the story far from over. Plus, if you're looking for vacation ideas that won't break the bank, you're going to want to hear this. We'll tell you where you can stay for a steal. Kyle. And we've got some rain coming our way. It looks like the heaviest of that will fall south of Interstate 70. We'll have a closer look at the timeline for your Sunday showers. You're watching our TV 6 News at 6. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Welcome back. Attorney General William Barr says he is ready to advise Congress on Robert Mueller's special report on the Russia investigation as early as this weekend. Today, a Department of Justice spokesperson says tomorrow will be the earliest Barr will deliver a summary of the Mueller report to Congress. Here's ABC's Tara Palmieri with the latest. Attorney General William Barr arrived at his office Saturday morning to continue reviewing special counsel Robert Mueller's report. The contents of the report, a highly guarded secret. But a senior Justice Department official has confirmed one thing. The special counsel is not recommending any further indictments. It's better news for the president. It's not as bad as they thought, but there's still a whole bunch of things ahead. And now we're entered into a major political fight. Mueller has not spoken publicly since the investigation began, doing his talking only through charges filed in court. 37 indictments, among them Russians suspected of hacking the Clinton campaign. And there have been multiple guilty pleas involving some in the president's inner circle. Some of his top political advisors and strategists now convicted. And even longtime friends and family members caught up in the investigation. Many in Congress now calling for the report to be made public. Republican Senator Doug Collins calling on the DOJ to release the report to the public without delay and to the maximum extent permitted by law. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi insisting any briefings to any committees be unclassified so members can speak freely about every aspect of the report. Barr has told Congress he's committed to as much transparency as possible, but some lawmakers won't rule out calling for Mueller to testify before Congress. The Justice Department doesn't release the whole report or tries to keep parts of it secret. Uh, we will certainly subpoena 
the parts of the report. As for the president, sources tell ABC News he's glad the investigation is over. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, West Palm Beach, Florida. Tonight, unrest in Pennsylvania following the acquittal of a police officer in the shooting death of an unarmed black teenager. The not guilty verdict sparked protests when it came down Friday night. Members of the community gathering again today to call for justice. A 17-year-old was fatally shot in the back by East P Pittsburgh police officer Michael Rosefeld in 2018. Officer Rosefeld testified that Rose and, other pa and another passenger ran during a traffic stop. He thought the car des description matched that of an earlier drive-by shooting. Shooting. The family's attorney says they look forward to their day in court. The verdict today says that that is okay, um, that that is acceptable behavior from a police officer. Last night, several shots were fired at Rosefeld's attorney's office. The authorities believe they were fired in response to the verdict. The Humane Society of the United States Undercover, it is investigating animal testing at one of the largest contract research organizations in the world. They found dozens of beagles and hounds force-fed fungicides to test a new pesticide product. As of this week, that company Dow AgroSciences has agreed to stop the testing at the Michigan lab. Our Nicole Vowell is taking a deeper look into the scope of animal testing in the U.S. A warning, you may find some of this video upsetting. So in some cases, the animals are forced to ingest substances, either through putting a gel uh, capsule down their throats or with a tube. In some cases, they broke the jaws of dogs for dental implant testing. They inserted um, devices under their skin to have drugs pumped through their spinal canals. It's hard to watch. And for some, hard to fathom. But Kathleen Conley, vice president of animal research with the Humane Society of the United States, says this kind of animal testing happens more often than we think. There are about 60,000 dogs in laboratories at about 350 facilities in the United States right now. And I think the public is very shocked to learn that it's at that scale. And that's just canines. Conley explains when you factor in all animals, the number being used for testing is closer to 25 million per year. That's, that's warm-blooded animals. That doesn't even include fish, um, reptiles, amphibians. In this case out of Michigan, 36 beagles were being used to test pesticides for a company called Dow Chemical, a practice that is not against the law. The company is doing legal activities. Nothing illegal was happening. Oftentimes, Conley says federal agencies like the FDA and EPA request animal tests to approve products or provide funding for experiments. Most recently, the USDA under fire by a separate animal watchdog group for alleged kitten cannibalism, where experiments involve feeding kittens to dogs. Common testing, Conley says, should stop. We're going to be calling on these government agencies to change their practices. I'm Nicole Vowell reporting. The Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival wants to be more inclusive this year. The concert's organizers announced a new initiative called the Everyone Campaign. The goal? To create a festival culture that's safe and inclusive for everybody. The move comes a month after the ACLU sent a letter to organizers saying two transgender siblings were denied access to restrooms corresponding to their gender identities at last year's event. Organizers say that is unacceptable. Some resorts in Las Vegas are rolling back fees to boost tourism. That's according to a new report in the Las Vegas Review Journal. The paper says tourism in Las Vegas reached a four year low in 2018. Some spots are eliminating parking fees for people who spend a certain amount of money. Others are offering rooms without resort fees. The paper says the number of people visiting Las Vegas fell to 42.1 million last year. And even though it's officially spring, it doesn't feel like it everywhere across the United States. Check out this snow coming down in Boston, Massachusetts. The snowfall is from overnight into the morning. It's going to be a while for them to get into this spring season. And as we look out at IU's Bloomington campus, a gorgeous first weekend of spring, Kyle, but changes are on the way. Yeah, looking and feeling pretty good out there across central Indiana today. You see the sunshine there in Bloomington, and we've got more blue sky over downtown as we look from the IMS Pagoda this evening. Loving that shot and soaking up some sunshine today with temperatures in the 50s. 56 degrees for you in Greenwood, 51 right now in Kokomo. And again, that wind has been very calm. Now, once we see our sun setting here,
here, which will happen right at 8 o'clock. A quick slide on those temperatures. We'll be into the upper 40s, but kind of level off from there to around 40 degrees overnight, 37. So not as cold as where we started off this morning in the lower 20s, thanks to that blanket of cloud cover that will roll in and a light southeast breeze at just 5 miles per hour. All right, on Sunday, we've got some rain chances in the forecast, but it's not going to be a washout here. You notice, especially as we go toward the middle of the day, get a little bit of a peak on those rain chances. So let's take you to TrueCast. 8 o'clock in the morning does show some scattered showers around the area. And as we go throughout the day, again, a lot of green showing up on the map. But I don't think all of this will be making it to the ground here. Some more steady rain, though, as we head into the afternoon. By 6 o'clock in the evening, some pockets of steady to moderate rainfall for us. With the clouds and showers around, that means temperatures not quite as warm as what we had today.